When you come out of a toxic relationship with a narcissistic person or any other toxic person, did you notice that you no longer know who you are, that you feel like the truth of who you are is silence? So do you feel like the aftermaths of the relationship that you're in, that you've left, that you've been in, or that you grew up in, has left you feeling like you don't know who you are? Like you know you're in there somewhere, but you don't know how to bring it out. You don't even really know what you think and feel. You don't know how to make decisions. Narcissistic people, toxic people in relationships will silence the truth of who you are through lots of different means. And let's talk about that now. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and heal from toxic relationships with narcissistic people. So there's a lot of ways narcissists silence you within the relationships. A lot of the ways that they manipulate will shut your own feeling and voice off so that you are people pleasing or accommodating or walking on eggshells or stuffing it down so that you don't create more problems in the relationship or that you've been told that you are the problem and so you're doing everything you can to fix yourself when really what needs fixing is the fact that you're in a toxic relationship. So narcissistic people create a narrative about what they decide the relationship will be. They create this narrative through the grooming process, through the love bombing in the beginning, where they're creating a sort of way that you will treat them, if that makes sense, you know, the, the things that they will expect from you. And what that does is it sets the stage for who you are going to be within the relationship. But the problem is that starts translating to who you are in the rest of your life. And they do things like set it up so that you feel like this is the only person that understands you. Like this is the best you can ever have. Like when they're love bombing you so hard or when they are future faking or when they're creating the scenario that looks like the perfect setting, right? And they, what they're doing is saying, if you follow these rules, you will have this. They're creating a prize that is at the end of the game, right? because every narcissistic relationship is a game. So they're creating the prize that's at the end of the game, but the thing is you never get to the end of the game. During the grooming process, the narcissistic person will take little bits and pieces of who you actually are and start distorting them ever so slowly until it sort of morphs into this out of shape, out of proportion version of who you really are. So they'll take your strengths, they'll take your assets, they'll take the things about you that they like, they'll use the heck out of them, right? Stretch them all out of shape like a rubber band that no longer has any elasticity, right? And then they leave you there exhausted, worn out, fatigued, and point the finger and say, see who you are? And so then you start believing you are that broken down, devalued, stretched out rubber band, right? And you no longer have the resiliency to lift yourself back up. And so you start operating at a really low level for yourself. You stop seeing who you really are. You stop seeing your strengths. You stop seeing the good things about yourself. So there may be things about you that are like really unique, really you, right? Little quirks, little, little things, little large strengths, but sometimes just these small traits about who you are. A narcissist will come in and start devaluing those traits. First, they love you for them, right? They love bomb you with them. And then they start devaluing you for them. So say you're an outgoing person and you enjoy being with friends and you enjoy going out in public and having fun and being, being around people. A narcissist perhaps will take that in the beginning as something to love bomb you with something to say oh they love this about you you know they praise you or whatever slowly they'll start saying things like you're cheating you like your friends better than me you this you that right they'll start devaluing the thing that is you to the point where you no longer feel like that's who you are they take away your you-ness and that brings us to the devaluing and dismissal you guys this is painful and i want to pause here a second and say at the end of this video, there is information on how to reach out for help if you need it. So make sure you either watch to the end or skip to the end and get that info if you need help, okay? Dismissal and devaluing is when the relationship breaks down. It's no longer in the love bombing phase. The relationship has now started to deteriorate into a devaluation where the narcissistic person starts to tear down the things they once loved about you. 
They start to break your trust. They no longer listen to you. They don't listen to your feelings. They don't listen to your needs. They stop giving you affection. They stop giving you attention. They stop with, and they start withholding things like affection, attention, love, touch, kind words, whatever it is that is speaks to you in a way that makes you feel loved, they'll withhold those things. They'll reserve using them for the times when they can get something from you. They start shaming you. They start putting you down. For more on devaluation, check out this video. So those are some of the things you might feel when you're being devalued. But the thing about that is it's, you start to believe it. You are now completely committed to this relationship. You're completely invested in this other person, right? And you've been groomed to give this narcissist supply. You've been groomed to follow their rules, right? Like to do things the way the narrative that they set for the relationship, the tone they set in the beginning. And when you're devalued, are you really seeing who you are? No, you're not. You're seeing a dark version of someone else's projections onto you. You are not seeing a truth of who you are. It feels like a truth because it feels like, well, no wonder I must be this bad, right? But it's not a truth, okay? It's stealing your truth. It's lying to you and it's stifling your truth. Another way they silence who you are is by controlling and manipulating. Like, like for example, I'm a person that speaks to people fairly easily. I can understand different points of view and, and not take it too personally when people are throwing things at me that I don't agree with until the gaslighting starts. And then I will fall into it or I have fallen into it where you think you're just expressing yourself. You're just trying to get this person to see the reality of what actually happened. So the gaslighting and the controlling and the manipulating that is meant to confuse you starts confusing you, but you have enough logic, right? To see that it's not real. And so we engage with it. This is why we gray rock to prevent ourselves from doing this. Engaging with the manipulation and the control and the gaslighting means we get lost in there. How many times if you're a calm person who has arguments in a way that are productive normally in your life or has disputes in a way where you can speak back and forth without a lot of anger flying or a lot of hostility or shutdown, okay? And you get in front of a toxic person who is gaslighting you and you start engaging with it, trying to explain the truth, trying to get that person to see reason, trying to defend your position, and you feel the defensiveness of them and you become defensive, how many times have you been lost in that situation and it's too late? You are triggered, you are activated, and you are fully engaged. When they are manipulating you through gaslighting, they are intentionally trying to get your attention off the topic at hand and make you lose yourself, make you lose your integrity, make you lose your sense of right and wrong, make you lose your sense of what you were even talking about in the first place. So love bombing, believe it or not, love bombing is another way a narcissist makes you lose who you are. You fall head over heels in limerence with this person, not in love, in limerence. You are having all of your feel good hormones and brain chemistry flooding you from the love bombing. If you've been in toxic relationships in the past, if you've had toxic upbringing and you don't really know what healthy love is, this to you feels like somebody finally giving you what you've always wanted. If you are lacking in self-love, if you are lacking in having had anyone truly care about you in your life, this is going to feel amazing to some people. To some people, it's terrifying. And even that is manipulation. Do you see what I'm saying? You lose yourself in it because the focus then goes on to that other person. The focus goes on to what's being done. The fo you lose your ability to be who you are and be in communication with that person as you are to witness who they really are. When a narcissist starts playing the victim, we lose who we are. Okay, we have to give up our side of the story. We have to give up our feelings, our hurt, our experience, all of it, in order to soothe that narcissistic person. Because what comes after playing victim? Either a smear campaign, a silent treatment, or some rage, right? Like if they don't have that victim tended to, that lets them off the hook, because we know they're playing victim to get off the hook, 
from being in the face of what they really are, who they really are, and how they really acted, okay? If we don't pretend that we agree with that, or actually agree with that, right? Like some people really feel bad when the narcissist expresses something, it feels like they're being vulnerable. And so we say, oh yeah, you're really hurting. I'm sorry that I hurt you. I didn't mean to da 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 da, but really what happened is they gaslit the whole situation and the argument started because they wouldn't deal with the initial issue in the first place. So that's one way they can silence you. They can twist things around so much that you forget your side of things. Through things like triangulation and smear campaigns, you will lose yourself because you end up having to defend yourself when there's nothing to defend, okay? You start having a very activated response to the smear and to the triangulation where you're being singled out and they're pairing together, right? Or you have a group of people against you. Anytime a narcissistic person uses others to manipulate you, they are stealing who you are, okay? So hold on to who you are, you guys. This is all going back to why we gray rock, why we yellow rock, why we go no contact and why we go low contact. None of it is to manipulate the narcissist back so we win, okay? You have to understand this is a game that we don't win because it is a game between the narcissist and the narcissist. This is not a game. They use others in the game like a pawn, but there is no opponent, okay? They're, you're not in a match with them. They're going to win because if they one tactic doesn't work, they'll use another, they'll use another, they'll use another until your energy is burned up. And if you're engaging with it, if you are participating in the game, that is so far from who you really are that you've lost yourself to begin with, game over. You get it? So this is why disengaging, this is why stepping back, gray rocking, yellow rocking, going low contact, going no contact, whatever it is that you choose for your life in your specific situation can be really helpful as a tool for you to maintain at least within yourself who you really are. If you're gray rock with someone, and you're witnessing what they're doing and you're like, yeah, that's gaslighting in your mind, right? And you say, will not engage. And you feel that pull to like defend yourself or get in there and tell the truth or force them to see what they're really doing. That's what we do a lot. We want to force the narcissist to see who they are and how they are so that they'll change. But we know they won't change. So when we're doing that, we've lost ourselves. So to stay inside ourselves a little bit, watch it gray rocket uh -huh, uh -huh, until it goes away and wanders off into another room or wherever, right? Hangs up, stops texting, whatever. And then we do some self-care to remember who we are and to say, that's really awesome. You didn't engage in that this time. Yeah, that was really bad. Okay, now I'm going to do something to take care of myself because that situation was nonsense. All right, then you don't lose yourself quite so much. And if you're in situations where you can't leave these people, or you don't wish to leave these people, or you don't know if they're narcissistic, they just have these traits, whatever it is, having the self-care, maintaining who you are and taking care of yourself in the process, super important. If you need help, coaching or group coaching, information is in the main description of every video. You can reach out to me there too as well. There's email or leave a comment here and I will respond to you. Okay, so. You guys take care and I'll see you on the next video.